It yeah, just, why is it so easy for us to have these negative thoughts about ourselves? It is when so we natural, know, isn't sitting it? Sitting here right now, we know those are all lies. Yep. But we sit. Now, if you just want to use that as an excuse to eat them good old cream cheese brownies, go for it. Hi, everyone. Come on in here. We've been waiting for you. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the word of God in her wonderful, practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it, and we do not hold anything back. I'm Ginger Stocky with my beautiful friends Jay and Aaron Cluley, three friends who are all in different stages of life. Sometimes I highlight very, and that makes me feel really old. <laughs> very. Very different stages because I'm really old. I'm not going to do that anymore. But we do understand the importance of having loving, honest women around you. And when we need a little help, we call it Miss Joyce. And we just realize that sometimes you got to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Talk it out. Someone sent me a message about something we should talk about on the podcast. Oh, yeah? It was a good one, but I responded and said, just, just so you know, like it'll be a really honest conversation. Because that's what we do. It's, I know. So throw me your ideas, and then you just wait and see what happens. I, I like Dive that. In. Just so you know. Yeah. It's <laughs> like a prerequisite <laughs> for this conversation. A little warning. Don't suggest anything. <laughs> right. You don't want to deep dive in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We, will. Yeah, we totally true. will. Speaking of deep dive, I just want to share with all of you guys out there and you too, I have not eaten pork. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing this. This What's going to happen? It is important <laughs> to me. It, it's important? I, is I that what you said? felt left out at every event. Is it the bacon? Yes. It's you the even, bacon. You thought that you were even, like at our last thing when we came over to your house, you thought we out, you were doing something nice where you are like, Jay, I really think you're going to like these ham cubes. I'm like, Ginger, I haven't eaten ham or pork in eight years. But I gave in and I it's ate It's because I misread a text <laughs> and I thought you specifically asked for it. I, I was like, know, what's what's happening? I thought you were joking. <laughs> I was like, ooh, what is it? Ham? <laughs> but I gave in and I ate pork this weekend. How you feeling? Great. My stomach kind of did this sound like, rawr. But that was <laughs> like, it. what's going to happen? Yeah, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> but it didn't we're really good. That was, was raw. And then we're back. We're good. Thank you for sharing that. And I thought it was important. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talk about the real stuff. <laughs> and hold nothing and back. I, right. I eat bacon now. So I'm, I'm so, really glad about this. Yeah. That I, I know. I feel like I can, like I, for your I, feel like I can party and, 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 and fellowship better with you guys. <laughs> I'm happy. Now, um, bring on the pepperoni. I did not mean for the little bits of ham that I made. You stirred up a lot. To change yeah. your life, but it looks I like I wanted it did. to taste it. You well, don't cook often, so the fact that you made them. I, I you know how much I love you. I felt the love, and I just felt like I crushed like something yours. in the crock pot for you. Yeah. Well, we're really excited because we have a guest today with us that you are going to love. And we're also talking about a topic that is so very important. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. I think often brushed over mm -hmm. in the church. And I think we'll talk about that mm -hmm. too. But um, we are going to have someone with us who dealt with depression a lot of her life and really felt like fame and fortune and success mm -hmm. might help take care of it. She found out just the opposite. And um, Michelle Williams is a friend of Jay's, but she is also well known for many, many things. You know Michelle from everywhere, right? She write, She's written books. She's an author. She's a podcast host. Um, she rose to fame in the most famous girl group of all time, Destiny's Child. Mm -hmm. She is going to be here with us to talk about her bout with depression and most importantly, the freedom that she's finding in Christ and something that, that we can all relate to in yeah. one way or another. And Aaron's totally fangirling. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything when I walked in, but I'm so glad I got this seat because she's like right next to me. <laughs> I'm going to be yet. so cool. <laughs> and I'm, we'll look over and cool. Aaron will just be like <laughs> rubbing her hair. <laughs> hey, Michelle. Hey. <laughs> well, let me, let me just say this. Like Michelle Williams, I've, I've been a fangirl mm -hmm. for years just because of the music. And I've seen her from afar, um, loved her music, loved what she's done with the group, but also when she pivoted and did gospel music, like yeah. that was huge um, mm -hmm. for her to step out and do that. So I've been a fan from afar, but what really connected me to her um, was when 
um, we went, I went on a retreat after, you guys know what, what I've been going through over the past couple of years with the, the affair and the, the divorce and all that stuff. But yeah. um, her transparency at a retreat that I went to hmm. is really what made me just fall in love with her. I'm just grateful that she's here and sharing her story. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and that's what we really want to help other people understand today is there's no reason to have shame or to hide our pain. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it doesn't mean we need to air it everywhere. Right. We have to be careful with what we're doing, right. but there should not be shame, especially in the church, mm -hmm. yeah. about dealing with these mm -hmm. things. So she's going to be coming. We're going to be talking about it. Um, we're going to, of course, start with a little bit of God's Word, and we're going to see what Joyce has to say about what this kind of pit feels like when you're dealing with depression. So let's listen, and then we'll bring on our special guest. You know, we all have times in our life when we get disappointed, and the answer to being disappointed is to get reappointed. We all have times when we're discouraged, but the answer is to then find a way to be encouraged. Just like light always overcomes darkness, positive things always overcome negative things. Now, there's a little place that the devil wants us to live in called the pit. Anybody know about the pit, the pit of depression, the pit of discouragement, the pit of fear, anger, whatever it might be. Well, what is a pit? It's a sunken place, a low place, a dark and an unpleasant place. I believe self-pity is a pit. There's nothing worse than spending a whole day sitting around in a half-dark room feeling sorry for yourself. It's terrible. It's certainly not a place that God wants us to be in, and it's certainly not a place that Jesus died for us to live in. Joseph's brothers threw him into a pit, and he ended up in the palace, so he must have found some way to get out of that pit. And you may be in a place like that right now. Maybe some of you watching by television, you think you accidentally turned this program on just flipping through the channels, and you're sitting in a pit of depression or fear or anger, and it's no accident that you've joined us. God is going to show you through his word how you can get out of that pit. Now, we pray for God to get us out of places we don't want to be in, but to be honest, it's not all about prayer. I've found out many times when we pray and ask God to do something for us, he shows us what we need to do. I'm going to say that again, just to make sure you got it. A lot of times when we ask God to do something for us, Instead of just magically doing it for us, he shows us what we need to do to change that thing in our life. That is a huge statement. Yeah. It's huge. And Michelle, thank you so much for being with us. It's so fun to have you it here. It is so fun to be with y'all today. <laughs> I know we're talking about a heavy topic, but I've been hanging out with y'all for a little while today, and you guys are just a fun bunch. <laughs> I just want to see this on like mainstream like TV. Where's the, the networks? Come on. Come on, networks. Come on, networks. Come on, networks. Off cameras. <laughs> it was funny. We, we were getting ready and Michelle said, does Joyce know what goes on here? <laughs> and yep, she does. She's part of it. Yeah, she always tells, tells us you guys better behave. <laughs> They're not right. behaving. Not behaving. Michelle, Michelle. Don't tell on us. <laughs> not behaving. You know, I was playing. It's so awesome. Just, just, um, um, a, a great fun spirit um, that's uh, in here. So you fit right in. Yeah, yeah. we're glad yeah. you're one of the girls. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it already. <laughs> I want I want to jump into what mm -hmm. she said about we want God to take our pain, right? Mm -hmm. We want Him to just lift us up out of that pit. And right. so many times, it's more like a ladder that He asks us to climb mm -hmm. one rung at a time mm -hmm. to get out of there. Um, Michelle, as we were listening to that, you're you're shaking your head. Uh, is yeah. that something that you would agree with or that you experienced in your own life? I would certainly agree with that. You know, when you are in a pit, the pit of depression, let's just go ahead and just park there in the pit of depression. Um, sometimes you do lay around. I know for me, my experience was laying around for weeks. Mm -hmm. No one called. The world mm -hmm. didn't stop. Michelle is depressed. Stop, everybody. Stop. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah, you want that, don't you? You want that, but nope, it did not yeah, happen. It doesn't make sense that other people are still living and having fun it, when it I'm hurting. It did not happen, and you're sitting there stinky. Depression makes you stink. Now, just, just to be honest, because sometimes you're so weak, you don't know. If my experience, you know, you are laying in the bed. You're so weak that you're going, you're getting up to use the bathroom and getting back in the bed. Mm-hmm. And so what I started doing when I was in that place, no, get up. Brush your teeth. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You might even get back in the bed. Okay. But get up, brush your teeth. Okay. Now take a shower. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, what are you meditating on? Mm. You know, yeah. putting some praise and worship music on or music that uplifts you. Yeah. Um, because you do have to make the move for yourself. You are not going to pray a prayer and then like Popeye, your muscles, you're going to eat some spinach and then all of a <laughs> sudden you're going to feel strong. Mm. It is a process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me what that depression felt like for you, because I know it's different for everyone, Mm -hmm. but there are consistencies. There Mm -hmm. are things that someone else listening will hear Michelle and say, yeah, Mm -hmm. I I get that. What did it feel like for you? Well, depression for me, um, it started around whatever age group the seventh grade is. That's how far back it went. So it didn't happen all of a sudden when I got in Destiny's Child. The music industry didn't make me sad, okay? Um, it's so I remember not wanting to be around people, isolation, mm-hmm. um, my grades were failing, I didn't care. That's where it started for me. And so then I kind of went up um, into my 30s, not with the diagnosis. You know, I knew in my 20s something wasn't quite right. This is, you know, during success, touring, um, being around people, people dream to be around. And I'm like, I, I feel like I'm depressed. Something mm-hmm. I felt like I've had a name to it then. But mm-hmm. in the seventh grade, I didn't. Right. I thought it was growing pains. Right. Did you think that that success that you found, because you hit you hit it big, mm-hmm. would take care of all of those feelings? Like somehow... Getting what mm-hmm. we want right. should mm-hmm. fix those problems. I didn't I didn't think success would take it away. I thought success would just help me obtain maybe the things I couldn't obtain as a child. Mm-hmm. You know, we were fed, we had clean clothes, but I wanted that coach purse. You know, and you put it in your back pocket and the tassel would hang yeah. out. <laughs> you know, I wanted that I wanted Nike. I didn't get my first pair of Nike till I went to college. So to me, success meant I yeah. can obtain certain material things, right? Sure. But then you're you then you notice, okay. After I obtained material things, you know, after I'm able to sit back and watch my account build, it's that didn't take away that mm-hmm. um, that thing. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. you yeah. know, yeah, mm-hmm. the deep depression. Yeah. That depression. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it wasn't until my 30s that I actually got a diagnosis of depression, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow. Did you feel relieved? Like when, when it had an official name? I definitely felt relieved because, yeah. you you know, I had a name to it. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, now that I have a name to it, I don't want that to be my label. Mm-hmm. So now what That's am I doing point. to work it out? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there had been some ups and downs in that journey since that diagnosis sure. of depression. Yeah. You know, you can go years sometimes without something happening. Right. And then something happens where you're like, oh, I'm not healed from childhood stuff that even put me in depression in the seventh grade Mm -hmm. so getting to the root of it's everything has a root everything has a root Mm -hmm. well you even mentioned that success can be a type of trauma on its own yes absolutely success can be a trauma trauma just isn't blood and gore Mm -hmm. trauma is your life changing Mm -hmm. your privacy being taken away Mm -hmm. maybe somebody following you to your home um i've had the type of trauma where when i when we would check into the hotel room security would have to walk in to check the room to see if no one's hiding in the closet Mm -hmm. and I'm like wait a minute I would just want to go back to Wisconsin Dells with my family and be normal and we didn't have to worry about if someone's you know in the closet lurking Mm -hmm. you know um that's that's a a little wonky yeah Yeah, you lose your sense of privacy you do lose your sense of privacy um and then you just taught this is what comes with it suck it up when you, when you talk about finding that root, because I think that is so important. If we don't pull the root out, it just keeps sprouting back mm-hmm. up. How did you find that root? Because I'm guessing, I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing that 
part of finding that root also brought you to a place where the the word of God was able to help you pull that out and to Absolutely. help you change whatever happened that that wound to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, prayer and therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They go together <laughs> because that therapist is trained to help to ask you questions. You don't know the process or uh, there are different um, therapy uh, types or practices. I, I won't get into all of that, but they ask certain questions for a reason to get down to the root. And before you know it, you're talking about something mm-hmm. that happened at the age of three or seven, mm-hmm. right? Or you're discovering, as we discovered at that retreat together, there are certain emotional needs a child needs to have met, or if not, when they are an adult, those symptoms begin to manifest. So if you're wondering why you're 35 years old, 45 years old, reacting like a child, having a tantrum when you lose something or something happens, go back to your childhood and see at what moment, you know, this is just, this is, uh, why am I reacting as if somebody took my gummy bears away from me? <laughs> right. Okay, well, what happened to you around that age? Yeah. Getting to the root of that. Whether it was bullying, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, witnessing domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Um, all those things, um, they, they take root, especially when you grow up in a home where you don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up in a home where we didn't talk about it. Um, shout out to my family Awesome family, successful family, um, a family full of ministers, doctors, great, um, great people. But I think uh, my mom's generation did not talk about things. You saw things and you swept it under the rug. Now, I know when you lift this rug up, there are no dust bunnies. But if you lift (laughs) our rugs up. I'm not so sure. Joyce Meyer, I just want to keep the, the podcast in a good light. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. All right. that's funny. So imagine you're just sweeping stuff under the rug. And maybe because yeah. my parents didn't know how to talk sure. about things because they didn't talk about things in their mm-hmm. household. Are you yeah. are you alive? Did it kill you? Okay, there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Do you have a roof over your head? You have clothes on your back. Mm-hmm. Are you without food? There's nothing to talk about. Be yeah. grateful. Be grateful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and I think I wanted to add this like Michelle and I have a very similar upbringing mm-hmm. as well, even all the way down to like, you know how I talk about being Kojic, like a Pentecostal girl, like yeah. at, at the core. But one of the things in my upbringing was not a, like we didn't normalize therapy or counseling. Mm-hmm. It's a right. very uh, culture of, you know, um, what is it? Don't bring a reproach on God yourself or the church. So like, don't talk about things to mm-hmm. people. Like this even yeah. was not normal. Like having friends that you actually were honest with. Mm-hmm. And I believe that what's helping with depression now, even when I struggled with it, when I, I went through postpartum depression, which is, is different than, you know, like clinical depression, but that is real. Like having a child and going through that real pit mm-hmm. um, hormonal shift. Um, I didn't even... It, like I still was at a place because I was what, 22, 23. And I was still at a place where I'm like, I didn't know I could go and talk to somebody. Mm, and right. so I think so you're it's just stuffing stuff. Down. I stuffed it. And yeah. I didn't know, like I was just lying, lying there. And then everybody, oh girl, you're going through postpartum. And, and that was it. It's like, well, how do I get up? Like, yeah. like how, how do I get up? What, if, what do I do? Who what can do I, I do with it? Yeah, yeah. What do I do with this? So I think it's important for us to start normalizing, talking to people, I normalizing mm-hmm. even therapy, like normalizing dealing with it yeah because when ask you, s- you ladies a question mm-hmm. did y'all talk about stuff in your household were you free and was the environment created like mom this is bothering me mm-hmm. mom this is bothering me dad this is bothering me grandma auntie whoever mm-hmm. was were you allowed to talk yeah. about things you want to go first yeah we were and i don't i don't know if that's a if that's just specific to my home but i know my my mom was my best friend. She still is. So we mm-hmm. had that kind of communication. Mm-hmm. So when something bothered me, I would go run to her. Mm-hmm. So like, I, it makes me kind of emotional to hear you talk about that because I can't imagine what you must have experienced mm-hmm. where you didn't have someone that you could mm-hmm. feel like you could open up to, mm-hmm. which makes sense because she didn't know how to do that either. But yeah, so I did grow up in a home like that. My dad was the same way, but talking to my husband, he didn't have that same experience. Okay. So he, we've had to talk through a lot of that stuff now. Like as you're saying, things he went through as a kid, come out as an adult, mm-hmm. we've had conversations and he, 
it's him living through those things again wow. and talking about them now. Yeah. I was really blessed in that experience too. Mm-hmm. We we talked about everything and it was very very open and it it was also okay to hurt. Yeah. Which I think is huge. Um nobody expected you to hurt and you didn't want to stay there, but we did talk through things like that. I know if Joyce was here, she would say she did not grow up in a home mm-hmm. where anybody could do that, right? Mm-hmm. She had so many secrets in her home and so many wounds, and I know a lot of people can um, connect with that. So let's listen to uh, a little bit more that she has to say, something that's really important Amazing. about digging out of that pit, and Ooh, then we'll talk more about it. <laughs> what goes on in your inner life? What goes on in there? behind those closed doors. How do you talk to yourself? Those are thoughts. They're just inside thoughts. How do you talk to yourself? Especially, how do you talk to yourself about yourself? (laughs) Hey, I say good things about me. Just in case nobody else does. (laughs) I've already got it taken care of. Now, I didn't for a lot of years. I had all kinds of bad things to say to me about me. But you are not ever going to be happy if you don't learn how to enjoy yourself. You have to learn how to enjoy God, enjoy yourself, and when you do that, then you can start to enjoy other people. How do you talk to yourself about yourself? How do you talk to yourself about your life, your future, your past, the situation that you're in? This is never going to change. I'm so sick and tired, sick and tired, sick and tired, sick and tired, sick, sick, sick and tired. And then you go to God and say, I don't understand why I'm so sick and tired. (laughs) Come on, let's get a slight revelation here today. I'm sick and tired of this. I hate my job. I hate my life. I don't know why I'm unhappy. (laughs) What you say to you is more important than anything that anybody else says to you. Matter of fact, if you say enough good stuff to yourself... You can even be around somebody that just makes a lifetime out of trying to pull people down and it don't have to bother you at all. Because it's what you know about yourself that matters, not what everybody else thinks. Self-talk drastically affects our moods. Let me tell you something, I could be in some bad moods if I didn't talk to myself. Let's look at this again because this is so good. Moreover, let us be full of joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patient and unswerving endurance. And endurance, fortitude develops maturity of character, approved faith, and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces, I love this, the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. It becomes a habit. Make your mind up today that you're going to enjoy life on purpose. No matter how many troubles you came in with, find something today that you can enjoy. Think about something that's going to make you happy. Go be a blessing to somebody, but refuse to let your day just be 24 hours of sadness and being gloomy and thinking about every negative thing that you can come up with to think about. So what do you all think when you hear that scripture um, of what God wants us to think about and what he wants us to do in our life? But there's so much in all of that that she was saying. What are some of the thoughts you guys were having? Well, first of all, I just want to say that I think we all love Joyce Meyer because of the practical way she breaks things down. I felt convicted. She's like, girl, if you don't start talking better to yourself and blah, 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 blah. You know, and it's like, she's so right because um, as we think about a a scripture in Romans 12, I think, you know, um, don't be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing Renewing of of your mind. mind. She Mm -hmm. just told us how to renew the mind. Because how many times do we hear that scripture and be like, Renew my mind. So am I just supposed to read this scripture and my mind supposed to be renewed? So it's going to help with how you talk to yourself. What are you reading on? What are you hearing? Um, Are there people in your life who might be contributing to your depression? Come on. Let them go. Or (laughs) boundaries. Yeah. You know, and so I, I was just sitting here like she's giving some practical 
ways because she, she teaches no nonsense. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen overnight. There are some things that you have to do and talking to yourself yeah. and saying what God thinks about you and, you know, um, uh, whatever the things that are pure, or lovely of good report. Right. Think, on, Think those on these things. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love what, what you said. And then what Joy said too, about how like it takes, it took therapy and prayer. So, my husband and I have going to, been going to therapy, so I'm learning all these great things I wouldn't have figured out otherwise. So good. But then I have to like do something about it. That's just not going to magically change everything. <laughs> we don't so I'm spending all that money on therapy. I know, right? <laughs> and so I, last week I was like, why is this not working? And then I realized where my mind was going. Like mm-hmm. I'm learning these tools, but my mind is still going wherever I want it to go. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to get anything out of this money we're paying, I better start practicing these things and I need to be renewing my mind with Christ and the things that he's saying. It doesn't matter that I have this knowledge. What am I going to do with that knowledge? Mm. And it all goes back to my mind. And it's not mm-hmm. instant grits, people. No. It's not. Yeah. You it's don't a put process, water in it, yeah. put it in the microwave, and then it's going to be edible. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's always not edible. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that yeah. before you know it, a week will go by, two weeks will go by, and what you've been practicing and applying, you'll see some changes. Yeah. yeah. It becomes That's a habit. Mm-hmm. It good. becomes a habit, mm-hmm. like Joyce said. But the, the once the, the light bulb switches, when mm. you realize, I have to take ownership of my process of healing. Give it to the Lord, of course, of course mm-hmm. but you have to put feet to your faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, because it's, it's, it's e- it, and sometimes it's easier said than done. I've been there. Mm-hmm. I, I almost went there this round. Like I could feel myself, mm-hmm. 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 you know, it was yeah. like, you know, like, I'm, I'm, and I would say things like, I'm not good enough. Maybe I wasn't pretty enough. Maybe the weight, maybe the, you know, so I just started thinking of all the things of the whys. And mm-hmm. then it's just like, it's, it's all the little ugly things that Satan was saying mm-hmm. in my ear, yeah. you know, that mm-hmm. I started just realizing I was thinking and maybe even not always articulating, but thinking like, yeah, she was better than me. This, mm-hmm. like, that's why he he didn't, I wasn't good enough for him to love me. Like, it was things like that, yeah. that when you're sitting, it, so it's, and it's heavy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, like you I said, I, you can fit, like mm-hmm. you can fit. It's heavy, and so and it feels almost impossible to do it. And but when you realize that you're not doing it on your own, but you have to activate that thing and like mm-hmm. start speaking, be mindful of what you're saying about yourself. So then I'm like, no, no, no. And then even talking to you guys helped a whole bunch through that season. Like, because I was feeling like it was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And so anybody that's listening, like. We are. We're not saying that it's not heavy. It's heavy. It's it's not easy. Like it's to not. and it's in like it's one little step at a time. That's right. What it's, did you replace those thoughts with? I replaced them with saying positive affirmations about myself. And 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 you guys can go to previous episodes when I was walking through it, and I yeah. still do today. Like I replenish my my little bathroom. Look like a little teenage bathroom right now, but I don't really care because it's getting me through. On and I mm-hmm. might post it maybe because like <laughs> it, it's post-it notes all over my mirror mm. that say like. I don't even need a man to to validate me. I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully you made. Sure and like, I, even when I couldn't say it, I saw it, and I was like, yeah. and I look at myself and like, Ugh, she don't look it. But like, but, but <laughs> the mirror is a rough place to put that. <laughs> but, I, but, but it's a good but, idea but, because because that was one of the places where I felt the least right yeah like lovely. Like that was the place where I felt the worst. So, but yeah. you still were. But I was, but it was it. It was hard to see it. Absolutely. It was, when you're going yeah. through it and you're feeling that it's way, so it's hard. hard. It's like, oh, I feel like, oh. But I literally started speaking it. And then we talk yeah. about the full armor of God, like actively putting that on yeah. every day, yeah. even when I'm like, hell, I'm in a salvation, you know, sort of the spirit. Like, you know, but those practical things and taking it step, like you talked about earlier, that ladder step by step, that pulls yeah. you mm-hmm. out of that yeah. pit. It yeah, is. why is it so easy for us to have these negative thoughts about ourselves? It is when so we natural, know, isn't it? Sitting here right now, we know those are all lies. Yep. But we sit now. If you just want to use that as an excuse to eat them good old cream cheese brownies, go for it. <laughs> why, why don't we speak good about ourselves and eat the brownies? Huh. You know, but it's just kind of like, oh my gosh. I'm horrible. I'm not lovable. I'm just going to eat my life away. <laughs> it's so yeah. easy. It's like our minds, we nav- we um, gravitate to the negative. Yeah. It's right, so yeah. easy before. So I hate that it takes practice we to have speak to fight positive back about, about ourselves. Yeah, I love the Psalms for that. It, if you read through the Psalms, mm-hmm. there's so many wonderful, encouraging Psalms. But more than that, they're so real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because like Psalms yeah. 13, it, it, it starts with with saying, 
are, are you going to forsake me forever, God? Have you yes. forgotten yeah. me? Yeah. I love, love how real that <laughs> yes. is. Yes. But then it ends up with, like so many Psalms, yet I will praise you. I trust you. Yeah. You're here for me. Yes. So we can lay it all before God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it hurts so much that we don't even know how to begin mm-hmm. to start doing that. And that's where we're praying for one another. We're helping each other out. Um, we we need to sometimes have a little bit of extra prayer to pick us up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we don't always get that. Sometimes we're completely on yeah. our own. Yeah. So do do what we can. And God gives little glimmers. What were some of the things that you saw at your darkest moments when God began lifting you out? Mm-hmm. Some of the things that I saw at my darkest moments. What'd you do? How did you change your thinking? Because I, like, I didn't see a lot of good things in my darkest moments. Yeah. If we talk about we keep it real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't see a lot of good things in my darkest moments. I was ready to end it. Yeah. End it all. Um, but I think I'm trying to, what got me through deciding that day, <laughs> the world did not stop for me. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sobering. Mm-hmm. Like, why was I, ex- people care about you. They might, but, but when people pick up the phone and call you, you don't really tell them how you're doing because right. you don't want to be a burden. Yeah. So um, definitely, because I'm like, well, because I have faith, it was it was good to, you know, pick up the word and and um, get those songs back in my spirit, because for a while I felt so ashamed of what happened. Yeah. I stopped listening to praise and worship mm-hmm. music. I felt shame. Mm-hmm. You know what I How mean? How do you get past that? That you shame. Just know, like I shame to not listen to something that going to get me through that got me to where I am I think that's the what the enemy wants Mm -hmm. is if he can take away certain things and now he has you to himself Mm. that's the perfect place for him to take you out yeah Mm -hmm. the perfect spot but you will not win today and he did not win Mm -hmm. you know there's a song that I've been listening to called I'm alive because there's more yeah you know and so um there that's there is more Every time we get up and take a breath, Mm -hmm. there is more. There is purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, I will not, as much as I can, I will not let the enemy celebrate and put his little, you know, what's the party hats on and blow the the thing? You're not going to do that with me. (laughs) Yeah, no pity party. No. So was it like a a perspective change? Definitely a a perspective change. Mm -hmm. And then... um, declaring Mm -hmm. no more depression Mm -hmm. no more depression i was tired of those pits so now if i sense it i'm not saying that i don't have things that come along my way that can make me upset but i no longer sit i go work out i drink my nutritional shakes i eat because for me it it affects my appetite Mm -hmm. so when you don't eat you're weak Mm-hmm. And you no 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 staying not staying busy but doing something productive yeah um to to stay up and that is my responsibility mm-hmm. oh and um, end mm-hmm. of 2019 coming into 2020 I said no more no more <laughs> and in 2020 there was no more mm-hmm. did I have hurts and triggers absolutely but did I get in the bed no mm-hmm. how do we help people how what are do you have people close to you what do you do if somebody tells you hey I'm down and depressed mm-hmm. if you know I don't know yeah. if your, your experience or we know your experience with it what are some of the things that maybe we can help people be like okay definitely don't say that you know <laughs> or what are some of the cool things that you know, we I, do. I think that's a great question. And mm-hmm. one of the first things is I tell them, thank you. Like, thank you for telling me that. That's so good, acknowledging it. Yeah, yeah because mm-hmm. I love them so much. Yeah. And I know how hard it is mm-hmm. to admit that sometimes. Mm-hmm. And to just say, thank you for sharing your life with me like that. And I will be here. I'll pray for you. I'll talk through anything you want me to. Yeah. We can do what you want. We can pray together. I can pray for you and keep it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> we can we can look at the word together, but I think being there mm. for them mm-hmm. is more important than anything else that I know of. I was just talking to a friend last night. It's a friend of Mike and I's and 
he struggles with depression. So he was just sharing what that experience has been like. And I was, I told him, I'm so appreciative of you opening up about this. Mm -hmm. I know it's not easy to talk mm -hmm. about. And he was saying how he and his wife have been together so long. She's learned like when he, when he's in that place. And so she knows sometimes he doesn't need to talk. Yeah, and right, so yeah. it's learning that from what I took from him, learning that person and respecting what they might need. Cause he said, usually he can be over like the next day might be better. And mm -hmm. so it's not pushing them, but sort of going at their pace. Okay. I found that was that's really good. interesting. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. uh, that's what worked for them. And but that's a form of being there for that person. Exactly. Right. Verbally or nonverbal. You Different know. for each person. Yeah. Like, what do you need? But that's sometimes good. being there for them also means some tough love. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You, you don't let someone stay in that dark, dark yeah. place. You're mm -hmm. there to help them, even if it's just incredible intercessory prayer. I'm not going to give up on them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep telling them that God loves them and has a good plan for them, even if they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to the point where it hurts our relationships, but I'm not going to give up on them. That's why Jay calls me nosy. And I, I do. Because that's what I've done with her. Wait, we, we stop calling you Nosy. We call you Karen Aaron. Yeah, not Nosy Rosie. Not Nosy Rosie. Oh, no, my Aaron. initial name was Nosy Rosie. Karen. Because like, then we were like, okay, Karen Aaron. Okay. <laughs> because I like Karen, I will not stop. Honey, you will not. That's good. Relentless. That's okay. so good. But, but yeah. here's the thing. What Here's one of the things that I, I like to um, ex just share with people that get people that come to them to say like, oh, I'm struggling with this. It could be depression or anything. Mm -hmm. We have... We have so many resources now. Like long gone are the like the excuses of like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's called Google. You know, <laughs> like I mean, I'm not saying that Google knows everything, mm -hmm. but there's so many helpful tips out there to say like how to deal with the friend that's struggling with depression. What are some things to say and what not to say? Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. it's so much out there now that we have to if we really care about the person taking and that's with any topic that's with anything that your friends are struggling with like taking that personal like accountability to say i'm gonna google to see yeah. this i'm gonna ask i'll mm -hmm. call other doctors because mm -hmm. if you care yeah you have to be invested mm -hmm. in doing it but one of the yeah. things that i've told even friends because i've come out of depression before and because i've felt myself spiraling a little bit yeah you know is i like it's one one of the things you kind of said it's like the healing takes time. The decision can be instant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like once you realize that mm -hmm. the decision to say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose to this. Like yeah. this yeah. can't win over me. Yeah. That can be in a moment. So like if you're struggling with it right now, you can make, you can, even if you feel very, very weak, you can make a decision and say, God, with your help, Amen. with your help, like, I don't have to deal with this anymore. Amen. I can be done yes. with this. I can yes. be done with this right now. Yes. Yeah. But you have to understand that the healing takes time. That's the part that was the hardest for me was because I wanted it to be as instant mm -hmm. as my words were. And that wasn't the mm -hmm. case. It's still not the case. I still struggle with certain parts of my life and what's going on. And you're not a bad Christian because you still struggle exactly. with that stuff. It's a process, but mm -hmm. the healing part takes time. Yeah. And only God can determine that time. But as long as you do the work, as long as you make those decisions, as long as you make the decision to say, like, cause I wasn't ashamed to not listen to worship music. I was disappointed. Hmm. I didn't want to hear any more music that this music I sang to people. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear it anymore. I didn't, cause I sang it and I'm like, how could this happen to me? Mm -hmm. yeah. I was not ashamed. I was just mad. And it's okay to say like, I'm disappointed. I'm angry. Yeah. I'm angry. Yeah. I don't want to sing. I don't want to listen. But at some point you're going to have to understand that that's the medicine you need to get yourself right. So you have to make the decision like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Then you just listen, have it playing in the background and eventually you'll start mm -hmm. singing it. You know, just take it, be gracious to yourself. But uh, understand that the healing takes time, but the, the decision can be right now. So that takes like a, a little crack in that darkness for hope and light to seep in. You, you need just a little crack sometimes mm -hmm. to to begin to make that statement that you said, you know, this this is where I'm going mm -hmm. to yeah. fight back. Yeah. And you say no more. Exactly. And I surrender and I raise my hands. There are moments mm -hmm. where I'm walking around in my condo with the musical. Mm -hmm. and my hands are raised. Okay. Because worship does help with everything. It helps mm -hmm. with worry. It helps with anxiety. It helps with depression. It helps dealing with any, with any other unfortunate situation or diagnosis that you've had. Worship at the end of the day. 
it does help. It's just not, just don't be like me or with what Jay is saying, just, you know, um, because the enemy w- wants to snatch your praise yeah. and your worship because so his right. whole plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm-hmm. And if when he gets you by yourself, he can do whatever he wants with you. And then you come in agreement with that and you walk in that. And um, before you know it, you, you can be out of here permanently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you have to then, Mm -hmm. you have to also then pivot from just listening to opening your mouth. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wield your weapon. Like, because a lot of times we listen to music or we, we read the words silently and don't, and I realized in my pit of like my lowest pit, I remember just, yes, you felt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was, oh, it's gripping. Like, Hmm. and uh, sometimes I just cut, Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 crazy. Like, and so I remember that, mm-hmm. and I know like how I even sometimes feel in this whole season of healing is like you just is like I want to, my heart wants to, but you just have to make a sound. You have mm-hmm. to will yourself to wield your weapon. You go from listening to the music, listening to the sermon online, listening to the all that, listening to the mm-hmm. podcast. Great, 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 great. But at some point. You have to open your own mouth because he wants to hear your yes. worship, and Satan needs to hear your specific mm. voice to cast him out. You have to use it's your good. words. It's so good. So and let the word yeah. of God seep into that one little crack of hope yeah. that that you begin to see open up. I mean, there's so many amazing mm-hmm. scriptures yes. of who God wants to be in our lives. Yeah. He's the lover of our soul. Good. He's the healer of our deepest, darkest hurts. He is that hope in the most hopeless situation. Mm -hmm. And just like Jay said, write down those scriptures. And like you said, Michelle, don't be ashamed to reach out and get the help that you need, whether it's professionally, Mm -hmm. maybe it's medication, because, Mm -hmm. you know, this this is not just something that is... um, be- because there's something wrong with me. I made a mistake. Right. I did yeah. something right. that I deserve this. Yeah. And that's how we feel sometimes when we're in that dark place. Mm-hmm. It's not that we deserve it. Sometimes we need some physical need some help. help to get our body mm-hmm. through this yep. as mm-hmm. well as our soul and spiritually. So it's just a whole thing. and it, That's you, so good. I mean, we, we take ibuprofen for yeah. headaches. You know, maybe, you know, when, if you go to the hospital for food poisoning, they're going to give you an IV for nausea and an IV they're to They're going to pump your, your stomach yeah, from that bad yeah, yeah. food. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Let's get the right. bad stuff out. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from your electrolytes, they're going to hydrate yeah. you. So, you know, and I didn't want to get too, you know, medical. But when you brought up medication, that that's an option too, you know, and maybe it doesn't happen. Have to be permanent. I don't know the situation, you know. Um, for me, you know, yes, um, medication was involved, um, but because I believe, you know, I'm taking it for if I, I a headache for ibuprofen, a headache for ibuprofen, ibuprofen <laughs> for a headache, yeah. then maybe I can take something um, for anxiety that will lead to depression. So just, you know, like we said, get. Go 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 see somebody and have no shame about it. Like you don't have to broadcast it to mm-hmm. everybody unless you feel led one day and you feel it's gonna inspire, make impact and change and save a life. Go for it. I'm with you on that. Um, but like you said, um definitely don't don't have any shame of of talking to somebody through yeah. it. However, when when you said that about prayer and therapy, I can just uh-huh. hear so many Christians going, uh-uh. uh-uh. You're taking away the power of God. You exactly. Know. And and that's not how it works because when when you talk about prayer, God's hands aren't tied by anything. So he gives us the mm-hmm. ability to have medical oh, yeah. advancement. So I just love that you're saying that. And I think it's so important that we as Christians mm-hmm. can stop blaming one another mm-hmm. for the problems that we face, stop putting shame on it yeah, if we need yeah. extra help, yes. mm-hmm. and can look at it in a holistic approach like we do everything else in our life. Mm-hmm. As long as God is the focus and we're yeah. not trusting mm-hmm. something else over Him. But if we're putting them together, I think that's hugely Absolutely. important. I, I've heard a, a doctor, Dr. Anita Phillips say, I believe I'm, I'm quoting it correctly, you know, prayer is a weapon, therapy is a strategy. Mm-hmm. So I know that after I leave therapy, 
I pray and be like, now, Jesus, you heard what she said. Yeah. So th- And I feel like my prayers have yeah. become even more specific. Yeah. It's like after you get a doctor's report, you pray specifically according to what that doctor yeah. said. Well, we're going to close with, with a little bit of encouragement from Joyce. But before we yes. do that, Michelle, is there anything that you would say? Because you're talking to our friends who may be in that place where you were mm-hmm. a few years ago. What, what is the best advice that you would give them wow. to hang on to that hope that's out Ooh. there? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And yes, I know who holds my future. This is the advice. And your life is worth the living just because he lives. That's awesome. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. I try to stand here sometimes, you know. Come on, girls. Let's go. Chorus, because. I'll never do it again. You don't want it. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Um, (laughs) Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Life is worth. The Lord Lord has you here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I contemplated many times, Mm. but my life is worth living. That's right. Simply because he lives. Yeah. Not even simply what it took for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To Big die for us to for live us. to live again. Oh, to yeah. live. Yeah. 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 You know? So good. Yeah. Well, friends, we love you so much. We're so glad that you've been here with us. And we just pray yeah. that you can hold on to something today that you heard. That God who loves you so much yeah. and has so much ahead yes, for you yes. for your future will bring that little glimmer of hope and light into your life. We do have a free resource for you today because we love you. We want to get the word into your hand. So go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and get the free resource called Overcoming Depression. Um, We hope that you'll do what God asks you to do. And most importantly, I I think I want you to hear this. There is no shame Mm. in your pain. There's only shame that's being put on you from Satan, and you don't have to take that. You can right now, just like Michelle said, just like Jay said, you can say no, Mm -hmm. and it's not going to happen overnight. It's a slow process, but we see it sitting right here. (laughs) Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's it's real, and there's hope for you. So we just love you so much. We want you to know that you matter, and we're going to close with this encouragement from Joyce as we say goodbye. Thank you again, Michelle. Thank y'all Thank for you. having love me. You. Don't let this be the last time. Uh, we'd I'm going to hunt you down. You down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be peeking through those windows. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm like, it. What, what, is, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a meme. <laughs> Michelle? <laughs> that is me. It's just Michelle again. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. There's one person that the devil cannot defeat, and that's somebody who refuses to give up. Every time you find yourself in a pit, skip the guilt trip, climb out. I got to keep saying skip the guilt trip because if you make a mistake one time and you realize it and now you start feeling guilty, it's going to weaken you and help you fall right back into the same trap again. Guilt does nothing good for us at all. Repent, go on about your business. Paul said, one thing I do, one thing I do. The great apostle Paul, one thing I do. It is my one aspiration, letting go of the things that are behind and pressing toward the things that are ahead. And that is your privilege today, whether you're in this building or watching by TV, no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter what kind of pit you find yourself in right now, the answer from God is very simple. Talk to God about it, repent, climb back out of the pit, Make a good decision that's going to override the bad decision. Skip the guilt trip and go on. If you fall in again, do it again. If you fall in again, do it again. If you fall in again, do it again. And no matter how many times it takes, you will wear the devil out if you don't give up.